Welcome to the session of overview of civil service notification 2022. We have a good news for you. This year vacancy has been increased. This session will be useful for the candidates who are going to appear for civil service examination 2022. And this session will be also helpful for the parents whose kids aspire to become a civil servant and serve the country. And for the common audience who want to know the process through which every civil service aspirant has to go through before entering the service, you can also watch this video. Let's go into the session. Hello aspirants, a very good morning to you all. And the good news is that the UPSC notification for civil service examination 2022 has been released. The date of the civil service preliminary examination is 5th of June 2022. You can apply from today and the last date for the receipt of application is 22nd February 2022. You have 20 days time from now on. So kindly don't wait for the last day or last week. Apply as soon as possible by using the link that is given in the description. Now let us look at some of the details in the notification. See the vacancy for this year is 861. This graph shows the general trend in the vacancy in UPSC civil service examination over the years. See this year vacancy is nearly 150 more when compared to last year. So this is a nice opportunity. Please work hard and don't waste time. So it's high time that you accelerate the civil service preparation at least from now. See these are the centers for preliminary and main examination. Kindly go through it. Now we will see the eligibility conditions. See for IAS, IFS and IPS, the candidate must be a citizen of India. And for all other services, a candidate can be a citizen of India or a subject of Nepal or a subject of Bhutan or a Tibetan refugee who came over to India before 1st of January 1962. Now with regards to the age limits, see a candidate must have attained the age of 21 years and must not have attained the age of 32 years as of 1st of August 2022. See, UPSC has even given the inclusive dates that is, the candidate must have been born not earlier than 2nd August 1990 and not later than 1st August 2001. See, this is for general category candidates. So, we have age relaxations too. See, the upper age limit that is 32 years will be relaxable up to a maximum of 3 years in case of candidates belonging to OBC. And the upper age limit will be relaxable up to a maximum of 5 years for the candidate belonging to scheduled caste or scheduled tribe. The upper age limit will be also relaxable up to a maximum of 3 years in case of defense services personnel who are disabled in operations during hostilities. And it is up to a maximum of 5 years in case of ex-servicemen including commissioned officers and emergency commissioned officers or short service commissioned officers and they should have rendered at least 5 years military service as on 1st of August 2022. See the upper age limit will be also relaxable up to a maximum of 10 years in case of candidates belonging to PWBD that is persons with benchmark disabilities categories. Kindly note that you should enter the date of birth as it is entered in the matriculation or SSLC or HSC certificate. Now, we will look at the basic minimum educational qualification required to appear for the examination. The notification states that the minimum qualification for the UPSC examination is a graduation degree. See, the candidate is required to have a degree from a government recognized universities. The universities should have been incorporated by an act of the state or central legislature in India. The candidate can also hold the equivalent qualification or a degree of any educational institutions established by an Act of Parliament or declared to be deemed as university under Section 3 of the UGC Act 1956. See, one of the common doubts among the candidates is whether a distance education degree is valid for the UPSC exam. Actually, it is valid. See, the notification states that the minimum qualification for the UPSC exam is just a graduation degree from a government recognized university. The degree may be from any discipline like arts, science, engineering, etc. So, a degree from a distance education university or any open university is also valid and acceptable for appearing for UPSC examination. 
Another common doubt is whether young aspirants who are studying in their final year and their final degree is yet to be given, whether they can apply for the preliminary exam. See, actually, people in the final year of the degree examination can appear for the preliminary examination, provided that they are born before first of August two thousand one. That is, you must have completed at least twenty one years of age. Okay, but. You must ensure that if you clear the preliminary examination and appear for mains, you will be required to produce proof of passing the requisite qualifying examination. That is your degree certificate along with your DAF. That is detailed application form one, with which you have to apply for the main examination. See, if you don't produce your degree certificate during the DAF one for the main examination, you will not be admitted to the main examination. Note here that. such proof of passing the requisite qualifying examination that is your degree certificate should be dated earlier than the closing date of daf 1 of main examination now this is for aspirants who are in their final year of mbbs see you can also appear for preliminary examination without having your degree certificate but before appearing for main examination you must ensure that you have completed your degree but here also it is not necessary that you should have completed your mandatory internship so before filling out your mains daf form you should submit a copy of certificate from a concerned authority of the university that you have passed the requisite final professional examination along with your application see you must ensure that once you clear mains before appearing for your interview process you must have the original degree certificate including completion of internship for the award of degree so to simply put only before appearing for the interview process you must have your degree certificate including completion of mandatory internship now we will look at the number of attempts available to the candidates see every candidates appearing at the examination will be permitted six attempts at the civil service examination however relaxation in the number of attempts will be available to the candidates belonging to SC ST OBC and PWBD category so the number of attempts available to the candidate belonging to OBC is 9 attempts and for candidates belonging to SC or ST the attempt is unlimited subject to the age limit for PWBD it is 9 attempts for general EWS or OBC and unlimited for PWBD candidates belonging to SC or ST see here is an important note an attempt at the preliminary examination shall be deemed to be an attempt at the civil service examination so that means you have to appear for at least one paper in the preliminary examination to be counted as an attempt if you are just applying but not appearing in any of the paper it will not be counted as an attempt now for candidates who have already appeared and cleared the civil service examination only those candidates who are appointed to the ias or ifs and continues to be a member of that service will not be eligible to appear at the examination that is civil service examination 2022 a candidate who is appointed to ips and continues to be the member of that service cannot again opt for ips on the basis of civil service examination 2022 results and regarding the fees Candidates are required to pay fee of rupees hundred, and it is exempted for female, SC, ST, and persons with benchmark disability candidates. See, while you are applying, you will be required to indicate information such as details of centers for civil services mains examination and Indian Forest Service main examination, an optional subject to be selected for the examination. See, you should also indicate your medium of examination for main exams. kindly note that no request for changes in these details once online application is submitted will be entertained by the commission so stay cautious while you choose your center medium of examination and optional because once you choose it you will not be able to change it in the future there is also a provision to withdraw your application see the online application can be withdrawn from 1st of march 2022 to 7th of march 2022 till 6 pm after which the link will be disabled now finally we will see the plan of the examination the civil service examination comprises of two successive stages first stage is civil service preliminary examination which is of objective type so you have to mark the answers in the omr sheet based on the results of the preliminary examination you will be selected for the 
main examination. Here, the preliminary examination will comprise of two compulsory papers of 200 marks each. Both the question papers will be of objective type that is MCQs and each will be of two hours duration. The GS paper 2 of preliminary examination that is your CSAT paper will be of qualifying nature with minimum qualifying marks fixed at 33 percentage that is you should get 66.66 marks out of 200 marks that is you should get at least 27 net questions correct and in the preliminary stage of the examination there will be a negative marking for incorrect answers which is one third of the mark assigned to a particular question and preliminary examination each question carries two marks so the negative marking will be of 0 0.66 marks and if a question is left blank that is no answer is given by the candidate there will be no penalty for that question and regarding the language of the question papers it will be set in both English and Hindi now coming to the second stage it is civil service main examination it consists of both written and interview or personality test the written examination will consist of nine papers of descriptive type note that paper A and paper B will be of qualifying nature and will not be counted for final merit and the candidates who obtain a minimum qualifying marks in the main examination as fixed by the commission will be called for the personality test the number of candidates to be summoned will be about twice the number of vacancies to be filled the interview test carry 275 marks and there is no minimum qualifying marks in the personality test so marks thus obtained by the candidates in the civil service main examination that is written part as well as your interview part would determine your final ranking the written examination will consist of the following papers see there are two qualifying papers in the mains examination which will not be counted for merit that is paper a and paper b see here paper a consists of 300 marks here one of the indian languages to be selected by the candidate the indian languages here is the languages listed in the eighth schedule of the constitution and paper b it is english paper it also consists of 300 marks and these are the papers which will be counted for merit that is paper one which is your essay paper it consists of 250 marks and paper two it is your general studies paper one consists of 250 marks it covers indian heritage and culture history and geography of the world and society and there is paper 3 which is your general studies 2 it covers governance constitution polity social justice and international relations and then the paper 4 which is your gs3 it covers technology economic development biodiversity environment security and disaster management and then there is paper 5 which is your GS4 it covers ethics integrity and aptitude and paper 6 and paper 7 it consists of your optional subjects there are two papers in an optional subject so totally it has 500 marks that is 250 marks for each paper so that final subtotal will be 1750 marks for the main examination and 275 marks for the personality test so the grand total comes to 2025 marks see the evaluation of the papers namely essay general studies an optional subject would be done simultaneously along with your qualifying papers that is paper a and paper b but note that you should get at least 25 percentage in english and indian language paper that is you should get at least 75 marks out of 300 marks in paper a and paper b Otherwise, your essay, general studies and optional papers will not be taken into cognizance. And here also the paper A on Indian language will not be compulsory for the candidates hailing from the states of Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland and Sikkim. Kindly go through the list of optional subjects for the main examination. You can choose anyone from this list. For the detailed syllabus regarding the examination, kindly click on the notification link given in the description below see i am again telling you this is the high time that you accelerate your preparation at least from now on you have only 122 days left from today and that's all regarding this notification finally i want to end up this session with the quote see 
push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you and it may seem tough but trust me it is going to be a worthy journey and if you have any queries or if you want any video on how to apply kindly post that also in the comment section and we at shankar ias academy are more than happy to guide you if you want to know about the current programs in our academy targeting the preliminary examination kindly visit the links given in the description if you like the video hit the like button post your comments and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel on behalf of shankar ias academy we wish all the aspirants good luck at this year's examination